Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another video and what I don't call a series, but it's kind of a series, um, which is migrating data between databases. Normally I am migrating data to a Postgres or SQL database, but I've realized I've never done uh, migrating from Postgres to a Snowflake database and I'll also just do vice versa for fun today. Uh, so that's exactly what we're gonna cover in this video, show you how you can migrate data from a Postgres database to a Snowflake database but also incorporating more advanced things like batch processing, showing you how to build your own data transformations, doing data validation, logging, so you have really detailed error logs when anything goes wrong, and then also retry mechanisms and incorporating parallelization um, so that you're running really efficient and also pipelines that are almost self-healing. You know, they can If there's a simple error that they can quickly get past, they'll quickly get past it. So great video if you are migrating data between Postgres and Snowflake, probably not for you if you're not, but Stay tuned and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually just go to our uh, local requirements. Just make sure that you ha we have our uh, Snowflake and Postgres providers. So here, have Apache provider Snowflake, and then also make sure you have the Apache, or sorry, for Postgres, and then here we'll also add the Apache provider for Snowflake. Um, these are the only two you'll need. Um, the everything else, just kind of general system, uh, system or system packages. So nothing really too complex. And then I just have all these other ones um, here, just because I'm using this repo for many things. But but you, all you need is just the Postgres and Snowflake providers. And then now we've got those, we can go create our DAG. So we'll just call this DAG uh, Postgres to Snowflake.py, and then get started building with by incorporating a few different packages and requirements. So here we'll import OS so we can interact with and read uh, system level changes. So OS is just system level operating. Uh, pandas, classic pandas data frames for you know managing our data. Then we have our Postgres, Postgres Snowflake hook. Can, I think you can guess what those are for. Um, and then a Python operator for writing our Python scripts and then running them. Um, utils just days ago for uh, easy date kind of capture and also being able to keep a solid record of time for the long term. Snowflake connector for connecting within our Python operator and, and interacting with it um, and kind of creating a stable connection. Temp file for creating temporary files for storing our data before we actually upload them into Snowflake. Um, and then logging for interacting with the logging interface. So once we're done just setting up all of our packages and requirements, we'll write our first task which is going to be just fetching some Postgres data. And so here, we're going to use the Postgres hook and the Postgres connection ID to fetch uh, Postgres data in batches of 10,000. So here, we have our batch number, so this is how you can keep track um, of how many batches you're gonna create, but then also have it reset in between DAG runs. So our Postgres hook is gonna connect into Postgres, then it's going to say, hey, our offset is batch size by batch number. Um, so for the first batch, there's gonna be no offset, but then for subsequent batches, it'll start at 10,000 and get 10,000 to 20,000. Um, and then here, we're just gonna select for all from our Postgres table, but with a limit. So if you watch our SQL query optimization, you know the power of limit order or limit in your SQL queries. And then with the offset as well there, use the Postgres hook to execute that SQL statement and then also serve the batch information uh, with the amount of rows within the logging file so that you have that information easy. If anything goes wrong, you can check, hey, this is what batch number it was, and this is the amount of rows that were generated. So if it's zero, you know, hey, batch probably didn't uh, uh, it didn't function correctly, or you just ran out of data. So that's our post Postgres fetch mechanism. Then I'll just have a pretty simple transform data task here. So this, I'm just gonna be renaming tasks. When you're moving in between uh, Postgres and, and Snowflake, the main thing you're gonna be to worry about is just making sure your, your uh, data types line up. So Snowflake uses slightly different data types as, uh, as Postgres does. But luckily having this kind of intermediary stuff where we're using pandas will stop it from kind of carrying over those Postgres uh, data types. But sometimes it doesn't work properly. Sometimes it's not a perfect system. So making sure that, hey, if you're running an error um, where you know data type isn't correct, this is where you're going to want to add something like this. So here, transform data. So here it'll check for what data column type it was right in at, change it from you know in64 to float, object to string, um, just making sure that everything is in Snowflake compatible order, and then vice versa. If you're going into Postgres, similar function here to just execute those query or check for data types, make sure they're in the right 
proper uh, Postgres data type. Then, once we're done with transform data, we'll then do write to CSV, so writing it to that temporary file storage um, that I was talking about earlier. So we'll set the file name within the DAG def or within the task definition, but for the purposes of this task, just generic, it's gonna read in a data frame that's passed from here, Gener have a file name uh, that's read in as well, and then to CSV, going to write this to a local CSV using that temp file storage was you know, just kind of created ad hoc. Um, so you, know, you will need to have enough storage just to fit at least the batch size in there. Um, and then just give you, you know, hey, written data to CSV files, so you have a location to pull the file name from. And then our big meaty step is going to be uploading into Snowflake. So here, upload to Snowflake, Snowflake hook, um, connection parameters of so just establishing our connection to Snowflake, creating that connection using the Snowflake hook, and then creating a connect value, so connection that has all of our different Snowflake parameters in there. You can also just use a Snowflake connection, then the UI, um, and then pass it in, pull it from here. Um, but you can see here, Snowflake hook. Basically, this is what's happening here is reading in all the connection parameters from your Snowflake connection ID, then bringing it into that Snowflake hook. Um, and storing in this connection parameters array, and then connect, pulling those values out and using this for this connection, then creating a connection cursor object, and then using this execution to say, hey, put these files uh, from the file name that we're pushing in from the previous task, which you'll see once I put all these tasks together, then execute this statement, copy into my Snowflake table, file format type is CSV, field optionally enclosed by blank, and then on error continue. Something to call out here too is sometimes you might need to create your own custom file format. Use the example data output as an example um, because I found that CSV file format, the default one for Snowflake can sometimes cause some issues. So just important to keep an eye out there. Once that's all done, just closing out the session, putting in the data that we're uploading within this task into the logging file and boom, all set. Then what we're gonna do next is actually write a data validation step. step. So you know, even after you migrate it, if you're just not checking, you're opening yourself up for failure. So I wanted to include a step here that's going to actually validate that data. So here, just some example, simple evaluation I'm doing is doing the count, is doing a count rows operation, getting the rows from Postgres, getting the rows from the uh, Snowflake table we just created using their respective hooks, uh, connecting there, and then here using that Snowflake connection, pulling the uh, total count of rows from the Snowflake table, comparing it to that Postgres row count. Um, and then saying, hey, if it doesn't match up, we're gonna raise a value error that rows do not match between Postgres and SQL um, and feed that out to logs and then kill the task as a failure. Um, and this is a step that a lot of people kind of forget about and will think, hey, I'll just do it automatically. Why bother doing it? Or sorry, not do it automatically, but do it yourselves. But to that I say, why do it manually when you can have a task that does it automatically as part of a check process, eliminates that human error vector um, and just lets you be more confident that, hey, every data, every piece of data that's gone through this pipeline, I know it's at least past the basic form factor chest, check. Um, and then here you can also add your more complex data uh, quality checks, data validation uh, tools to that task as well. Then here we'll go to transfer batch tasks. So here we have a data frame that's going to fetch Postgres data. Again, just passing from that batch number. This is just a task that we're gonna kind of work into the middle of it. Um, more of a, essentially just a transfer task that's going to kind of wrap around a lot of the functions we created. And so here we have fetch Postgres data using this transfer batch. Uh, batch number is gonna be whatever the batch number is. It's going, you know, so it'll be iterating through here. And then if the data frame isn't empty, uh, then start transforming data. So making sure that, hey, it's not just empty data frame and running these processes for nothing. We have that name temporary file. So creating that name temporary file, using that library we imported earlier, writing it to CSV, uh, uploading that to Snowflake, and then uh, unlinking that. So here, this, and then obviously throwing an error statement as well, saying if there's no data found, then we're gonna have an error uh, here and say we can't actually transfer it. So those are all of our different Python tasks and functions. Um, and next, what we're going to do is put them all together. So here we'll start defining our DAG, put in some default args first. So here, simple basic default arguments, the same ones I always do, have a retry, have a retry time delta so it'll exponentially back off. Then what we'll do is define our DAG body. So just Snowflake, Postgres to Snowflake, uh, you know, just obviously we know what we just created. 
And then here, I'm also going to include an area to set your variables. So batch size, total, uh, and then also total number of batches. If you want to you know, set an upper limit or you know, hey, this is the amount of batches I'm gonna need. Um, but here, batch size, this is you know, the amount of chunks of data or the size of the chunks of data that you wanna be processing at once. So if you only have access to really small compute storage, bring that batch size down. If you wanna have everything in a fewer number of batches, bring it up. Uh, and then what we'll do is say four, and sorry, I just realized I wanted to update that for this to the task flow API as well. So same format, just these are all defined now as task flow tasks. Um, and so just allows us to pass data between tasks as I had initially planned. Um, and then so here at the end, so validate data, we have everything pretty much as, as we had it before. Um, but what I wanna focus on just down here is we have um, for I in range, so this is total batches. Um, essentially what we're doing here. So here we have it where, sorry, instead of the, I, the four I in loop, which you should never do, um, here what you can do is get that batch numbers, get the total number of batches, then use the dot expand method to process all those batches in parallel, all these all transformations in parallel, do the right to CSV in parallel, and then the upload to Snowflake in parallel as well. So the dot expand method just basically means instead of needing to create all those different tasks independently, we just have one task instance that'll iterate through every single batch there uh, at the same time. So leverage the massive power of Airflow's parallel computing to do our batch transformations better. Um, and that is truly all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.